welcome to yet another video. Today I want to take you guys along with me as I use the apple cider vinegar and baking soda rinse for my locks. I am doing this to basically deep clean my locks because as you guys know, if you've been following me this far, you know that I have mentioned quite clearly and transparently that I have just <laughs> recently dealt with another spot of build up but this is definitely nothing new to me i have dealt with this plenty of times throughout my lock journey and i do have a few theories as that is concerned so i do believe that i probably typed my hair wrong um when i did the porosity tests on my hair it seems that my hair is high porosity and that it absorbs moisture very quickly um, and gets dry very quickly but it seems that my hair also takes some time in order for it to be moisturized and to actually absorb the moisture although it does grab onto moisture very quickly so what i end up seeing um, as of recently, I've been seeing that water bubbles um, or even moisture when I spritz my hair with uh, my leave-in conditioning spray, I realized that bubbles sit on top of my hair. Um, any type of moisture that I put on my hair without actually uh, working inside of my hair actually sits on top of my hair. And so with that discovery, I realized that Perhaps my hair is low porosity? <laughs> I don't know. It's so difficult to find out. Um, it is very possible too, but it's difficult when you're learning through things and you're discovering your locks as opposed to your loose natural hair, where that would be a whole lot easier to find out. But with locks, it's really difficult. So with that discovery, I realized that if I don't work the products that I put into my locks, I, if I don't work it inside of the lock and actually manually, you know, move my fingers and, and get that uh, water or oil into my locks um, and work it in until I see that it's invisible, what will end up happening is that it ends up sitting on top of my locks. Um, just as the water bubbles sit on top of my hair when I spritz it, um, any form of healthy oil could easily just sit on top of my locks, no matter how healthy or you know beneficial it is to my hair health, it ends up sitting on top of my locks because at times I fail to actually work the product into my locks. So at this point in my lock journey, I realized that it is not so much of a problem of my um you know my washing routine because before i mentioned that um i have built up or i had built up because i was not rinsing my hair out i was not rinsing the shampoo out um effectively i was not staying in the shower uh, for a lengthy period of time in order to rinse the product out this time i don't think that is my problem this time I think the problem is that I do not work the product inside of my hair. And some of you guys may think I do the most, but to be honest, I really don't do a whole lot with my hair as far as maintenance. I have my shampoos, I have my favorite oil, which is the Design Essential Oils right now. And that is pretty much all that I do. In between, I like to, you know, change it up, do different styles and so forth, but for the most part, my maintenance routine is very, very simple. And I don't use thick creams, I don't use pomades, I don't use anything other than oils and my shampoo. If you guys really, really take the time to look at my journey, you realize that I don't use, I don't use anything really. I got, you know, a weird comment from someone who was trying to tell me trying to tell me <laughs> about why I have built up and that I it's because I used shampoo in my baby lock stage. First of all, first of all, come on now, let's just backtrack, okay? If there's anyone that should understand the things that I do to my hair on a day-to-day -day basis, it would be me, you know? 
And perhaps I allow people so close to me and I, I, I allow even my, you know, followers, even you guys to be so close and um, tight knit to me because I do believe that we have formed a community. But sometimes I feel like community can also be a little detrimental. Sometimes people think that they have access to tell you what you're doing. And it's just so far from the truth. I only just introduced uh, conditioner to my locks for the first time a few months back. And um, I did dilute that that conditioner. However, it's not something that is a part of my day-to-day -day routine. And it's certainly not something that I used on my baby locks. My baby locks were, um, you know, a, a learning curve for me. I was using a whole lot of different other stuff, but conditioner was just something that I heard you should never put on your locks as, you know, as according to youtube.com. <laughs> So that's just something that I didn't play with. I only used my shampoos and the products that I was using at the at the time, which weren't the best uh, products for my hair in my locked state, but those were the things that I used. I did not use conditioner. I have only used conditioner for the very first time a few months back. So um, please don't tell me how I managed my baby locks if you weren't here to see the struggle, okay? <laughs> it was a struggle for me, you know? So, I've been here for about, let's see. I've been sitting here for about 15 minutes. I'm going to continue sitting here for another 15 minutes. And what I'd like to do is actually um, do this again. But <laughs> the thing is, I don't want to use up too much of the ACV because my husband is actually using it for his personal health journey. So... <laughs> Um, I am going to use it, but I'm going to use um, a little bit less than I used right now in the sink. Um, I'm doing this because I have been seeing a, another, you know, build up in my hair. And it is very, very, very common. So if people say, oh, I don't wrestle with build up, I don't ever have build up, I don't ever deal with lint. You're lying because everyone does. If you have locks, they are naturally attractive to elements in our air, whether they be the lint in your shirt, uh, dirt in the air. You don't even have to be the most reckless person. You could be the most cleanest person that dots every I and crosses every T and you make sure you do everything right in your lock journey and you will still have you will still have some element of, uh, uh, you know, fight against lint or even build up because I'm a person that I use things in my hair. I don't just not, I don't just use water, okay? I don't water only wash my hair and don't use anything. There are certain types of people that do those things and you know, I give it up to you, but that's that's not something that I do. I do use oils, I do use natural hair products, okay? So, I don't know where some people are getting the idea that I do the most with my hair because I really do very little with my hair. <laughs> um, my problem is sometimes I don't exactly cover my hair and in the beginning of my lock journey, I did do a lot of things. I did not use conditioner, so there was someone who I saw that said, oh, don't use conditioner in your starter locks, um, referring to another video that I mentioned. Um, and she said, oh, you'll get built up like her. I tell you, you just really have to laugh and keep it moving with some people because they just don't understand your journey. In the very beginning of my lock journey, I did use um, products that were that I realized now looking for you know looking backwards that it was no good for me and you know what that was my journey my journey is a journey where I have just started to learn more about healthy hair care and, and how to care for your locks you know obviously not everyone who starts their locks is going to know exactly what to do sometimes you go through trial and error and then you learn from your mistakes that was me um so yeah i i did use a lot of like heavy products i used coconut oil and stuff like that and from the mistakes i've learned not to do those things again so that was the build up back then 
that kind of stuck with me even though it has come out of my hair I do start you know sometimes I do see little little bits of that particular those particular hair mistakes in my hair um so when I see lint and stuff I don't get bothered I'm not bothered by it and that is not the reason why I uploaded a video saying that I am bored with my locks it has nothing to do with that however um lint is very very common you know and it's just something that you have to be careful with you have to prevent it me personally I am taking steps towards that um but I, I just say all of this to say or most of this to say don't bash someone if they are being open and transparent with their journey and you think that they since they are on YouTube they think that you should know everything in the beginning you don't know that's why I started recording because I didn't know anything I just wanted to track my journey and see how my hair was progressing from there on so stop bashing people stop holding people up to your standards and what you think that they should be doing because you do things this way if you do things your certain way why don't you pick up a camera and start recording and showing us how you do it okay because a lot of the people that say these things they don't even have a full channel where they're even talking about hair care or even helping people to prevent doing the same things that they see other people do and they bash like stop it now stop it okay and you can always unsubscribe <laughs> I don't mean to sound very negative but I'm just saying like if I if someone is open and transparent with their journey the best thing you could do is just encourage them not bash them that's why a lot of people end up combing out their locks they don't want to be a part of the lock community because there are so many people with locked l-o-c-k-e-d mentalities that they think oh this is the way you should do it and there's no other way and these are the rules and if you go against them then you're not doing it right and you're not really locked and natural we need to stop doing those things this is 2020 and this we just need to do better as a community of people with locks natural hair care and just the community in general you know what I'm saying so um, I think I just spent like maybe five minutes now <laughs> so I have another five minutes and I'm actually going to turn around and get into a different position I am comfortable though I'm like laying on top of some pillows that are on top of this stool and I've got this chair in front of it so that I can kind of hold my feet up at the same time so this is the most comfortable ACV rinse that I've had and I really was not expecting it to be so comfortable in my kitchen <laughs> oops wow this is the dirtiest water I've seen in a while come out of my hair that means it's working <laughs> I'm going to turn around. I got some of my towel in here. Arr. I'm going to turn around and get some of this in and probably sit here for like another 10 minutes and listen to my podcast. <laughs> journey for the last 10 years like this time around is probably my fifth fourth or fifth time doing the apple cider vinegar rinse and um the first time for this entire year so i can say that this one was really really effective because i did something that i don't think i did before which was rinse my hair with the acv and baking soda mixture before actually shampooing my locks before I believe I shampooed my hair and then did the apple cider vinegar rinse which never really resulted to that murky dirty colored water that so many of us on YouTube love to see I always wondered like why is my water not dirty perhaps I'm doing something good but it was because I had washed my hair beforehand and I'm not saying that that is the wrong thing to do but I think for me um, rinsing my locks and soaking them first before shampooing works really really 
um, good and, and a whole lot better than doing the reverse because here I'm actually able to um, let out and release a lot of those uh, that dirt and build up that was in my hair before actually using my favorite shampoo to actively remove the residue once and for all so um, from here on I will be soaking my locks before shampooing them um, I believe that the ACV rinse also helps to activate the shampoo you know once you soak your locks and you get the residue to the surface the shampoo has an advantage in actually removing what's on the surface out um, I've done this many times and the first time around is never the most successful um, it does it does work but what happens is depending on your particular case of buildup you will see that after the apple cider vinegar and baking soda rinse you your buildup is more prominent it's more uh, visible you actually see it on the surface a whole lot more and it might it might be discouraging to you because you're wondering okay I just did this rinse and my locks still have this buildup why I thought that it rinsed and removed the buildup once and for all but it all happens in stages so what ha ends up happening is the buildup comes up to the surface and after a few more shampoos the buildup rem is removed completely um, so of course after this rinse I didn't see like dramatic results but what I do um, plan to do moving forward is to wash my hair a little more often in order to remove what is left on the inside of my locks and outside of my locks so that I can prime my hair very very well for when I color it which is coming very soon I'm so excited about that and you guys stay tuned because I will be filming it here is what my water looks like and I have not seen my water look like this in a while Okay, so um, I just finished my first rinse. I'm going to go ahead and do a second rinse. But instead, I'm going to only stay under the sink or well, in the sink for 15 minutes. But um, so far, so good. Alright, let's start rinse number two. Really expensive, all in one shipping. Even if they end up spending the same amount of money, I should know that about my target market. And so you have to know that about your target market. Yours might be the complete opposite. Maybe you reach a clientele who can't stand constant discounts, the pricing, and they can't keep up with it. And they're like, kind of like the Apple guy who came with Jason Penny. Like, if you don't just tell me what the price is, charge me for it and just be done with it, like, they'll lose respect for you if you play that game. So, unnecessary grief for themselves because they're trying to go against marketing forces that are bigger than them and that they have no control over. So, um, one of the first... What better time than now to detoxify your hair, your skin, your life? <laughs> this is the beginning of a new year and it's so essential to go into the new year um, with a fresh new perspective, new vision, new sight. You know, a lot of us claim, you know, 2020 is the year of perfect, clear vision, but it's also great to take some time to reset 
um, self-care wise. And so I thought that this is a great time um, to actually detoxify my hair so that I get all of what is inside out and prepare my hair to do something different that I have never done before on my locks, which, are, which is color my locks. Um, I believe also that apple cider vinegar in the baking soda rinse helps to balance out the pH of your hair and it also cleanses the scalp and resets the scalp as well. Um, when you do this, you are actually preparing your hair to grow more effectively. Your scalp is balanced and your hair really starts to thrive after this. So um, after this rinse, I realized that my hair felt a lot lighter. It felt clean, as it always does when I wash it. But of course, after a few more washes, I will see, I will see visible results. This is such a great method to remove the buildup out of your hair and just give it a reset, even if you don't struggle with buildup per se, but you just want to refresh your hair, you want to detoxify it, you want to prevent it from becoming murky and full of buildup and lint. Um, this is a great way to give your hair a reset. And, you know, I just believe that no one should shame anyone for having buildup. Of course, it's not something that we love, but it is common. If you have locks, you are more than at risk of getting buildup. So if you see someone out there with buildup, just know it ain't easy in these locked streets. It's not easy at all. Our hair is so completely different from when it was loose natural and a lot of the time we just don't get it right on the first time so this journey is about rediscovery learning and growing and no one has it all together nope not even you <laughs> okay so i just finished the second rinse or the yeah the second acv um soak and i did include baking soda as well right now my hair I'm going to go ahead and shampoo it actually so I'm going upstairs in the shower and I'm just gonna take some time and wash my hair um, and then I will come back to show you what my hair looks like I'm making sure first of all that all of this is out and um, so I did this for like about 45 to 45 to 50 minutes because 45 uh, at least 45 to 50 minutes because I was listening to an hour-long podcast and I guess based on that um, I've, I've been soaking my hair for that long so um, this is what the water is looking like it is dark <laughs> It, and I'm happy about that because that means that the ACV is working and um, yeah I did not use lemon I don't have lemons and I don't really want to use lemons anyway so um, this time I just decided to do the ACV and baking soda last time I did this I didn't include baking soda so I wanted to include it this time and so I realized with the baking soda, um, the water started to fizzle very quickly after I mixed the two together. And um, yeah, <laughs> so right now I'm just gonna go wash my hair upstairs. I'm gonna wash it twice with the Dr. Locke shampoo. I hope that you enjoyed this apple cider vinegar and baking soda rinse video. Let me know down below if you've ever tried this and if so, when was the last time you did a detox with your hair? for your locks. Let us know down below, but thank you for watching. I love you and I'll see you in the next video. Later guys, bye.